In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create beautiful interactive prototypes using Figma. Hi guys, my name is Chilly and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. Prototyping can be tricky, but I have created this easy step-by-step -step guide to get you started with prototyping. I will link this Figma file below so you can use it to prototype along with me. Let's get right into it. I'm going to walk you through how to create animations like this in Figma. This is my working file. Even though there's only four final screens, the animation is made up of seven screens. That is because the screens in between are to help us to create the animations and the motion. And I will show you how. Let me go through the basics of how animating works in Figma. The most basic thing is being able to move from screen to screen. You press prototype and then you select the item that you want to prototype. And then you use these little blue plus buttons to link the clickable area that you want. So you have to drag and stick the arrow to the screen that you want. Once you've connected all the elements that you want to click on when you press play, this is what it looks like. If you press anywhere else on the screen, except for the clicking hotspots, this is what happens. These little blue squares to prompt you to where the clickable areas are. Now that we've got clicking from screen to screen down, I will show you how to create more movement. Before I talk you through how I built this prototype, I will explain how animating works in Figma. To create an animation, to create any motion, you have a beginning state and an end state. That's why there are so many screens of the same design to create those beginning states and end states. I'm going to show you what movement and opacity looks like. In your beginning state, this shape has got an opacity of zero, but I've shown it here in the gray. And in the end state, it has the opacity of 100 and it has moved up. To get that motion, what you need to do is make sure the layers have the same name. Once you've linked this frame to that frame, when you then play the prototype, this is what you see. This is the motion that is created. The same with scale. On state one, you've got a small circle. And then on state two, you've got a bigger circle. Again, make sure the layers are named the same. When you play the prototype, this is what happens. Scrolling is a little bit different. I'm going to show you how we create this. If we go back to the file, when you have all your shapes or elements that you want to scroll, we're gonna select all of those and put them in an auto layout frame. So you command A. What you wanna do is to make sure that this grouping of the frame is smaller than the shapes that you have inside it. If this is not smaller, there'll be nowhere for these to scroll to, and I'll show you in a minute. Once you've made these smaller, and go on to prototype, and then you select vertical scrolling, but if you had things that were next to each other, you could choose horizontal scrolling. As you can see here, it's scrolling, and this is the final view of it. So how do we hide the rest of the shapes? So you then go back to design on the frame section, you click clip content and that is what hides the content that's inside it. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you don't make this frame area smaller than the elements that are inside it. Can you see it hardly scrolls? So if you're having issues with your animations, make sure you check that. Let's make that back to the original size, clip the content, and there you go. We've got the vertical scrolling and on these personal trainers, we've got the horizontal scrolling and also a horizontal scroll on the dates. But I didn't put a horizontal scroll on the classes because I was struggling to have the animation of the image growing along with the horizontal scrolling because everything has to stay in place for the next slide. So I kind of cheated here just for this prototype and the yoga part that is not even grouped just to give more flexibility for that image to grow. Prototyping is a little tricky sometimes and you're gonna have to find ways around it. So if we go back to the beginning, I will show you that one, that fading in. It's created because the elements that you see in the final state, remember the end state, they are here in the beginning state, but they are at an opacity of zero and they are positioned slightly below. Here you've got the logo at the top and that has an opacity of 50 and the menu bar is at zero, but that hasn't moved. It's still in the same position. When we move from screen to screen, all those elements move up and they fade in. We don't need to smart animate because we don't have any interactions between those two screens. So instant is fine. So then the next page where we want that smooth interaction of the loading, 
we want the entire screen. So you select the entire screen, use those little blue buttons, and between those two, you're not going to click. So we want that to be after a very short delay. So we change that to 200. This is where we want to add Smart Animate. So after you've clicked and it moves onto this empty screen here, it will then Smart Animate after delay. So let's play that. It happened very quickly. So in terms of this loader here, I will show you that at the end that uses Smart Animate and components, but I will show you that towards the end. Let's just go through the whole flow for now. So next we're gonna do the classes. Same thing, we select classes and we link that to that page. And that is on click and we smart animate it because we have the same elements there. That little purple rectangle that's highlighting the selected state will move over. So between the yoga class growing, as I mentioned before, I cheated a little bit and I didn't put that in a group. But as you can see, as I'm hovering over it, the elements on that screen are highlighted in the screens to show that they do exist on that screen, just at different opacities. Let me show you all these other elements from the previous page are there, just at different opacities. So we're gonna link it up, select that yoga, select prototype and link it to there. And then on click, we smart animate it. And then between these two pages, there's going to be no action. So we want it to happen automatically. We select the whole screen and then we're going to do after delay. We want that to happen quite quickly. And again, after delay, because I didn't want all the animations fading and loading in at the same time, I wanted it to be staggered one after the other. That is why we have four screens for one interaction. The more complex you make the animations, you might have to have a lot of filler screens. You create these filler screens because on Figma it's not possible to animate individual elements, like to give them different timings, the same way that you can do on other animation software. As you can see here, there is a slight opacity on this image. There is a mask shape that is keeping the shape of this image. A mask is kind of like a stencil for an image. I've gone into the mask rectangle and changed the fill from solid to a gradient and I've put an opacity on the bottom of that gradient. But make sure that all your masks are in a group or else it will cause a lot of issues where you'll have things disappearing on the page. This final animation here, as you can see on my design file, there isn't an extra screen. So how did we do that? That uses components. Components are elements that you can reuse across your designs. They're usually used for creating design libraries where you create something once and you reuse it across your designs, such as buttons or icons. This helps to create consistency in your designs and helps you to design faster. You can make a micro interaction using components. For example, like the loading animation. I will be creating in-depth video on how to use components to create UI libraries and design systems. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Let's get back into this. Here I have a button that is grouped within a frame. Click here to create a component and let's rename that. We're gonna go back to the top and click there to create a variant of this button. Remember what we learned about starting states and ending states. I've already added a circle which has an opacity of zero. In the second button, we're gonna change that opacity to 100 and make it grow. And then we're gonna change the text to booked. Then we're gonna animate it from that button to this button and we want it to smart animate. You can play around with the length of the animation. You add it to your design by copying and pasting the original button into your design. So let me show you how to create the loader. So here is the final loader component. As you can see, it's after a delay so that it happens automatically. Let me show you how to create that. It is just a rectangle with rounded edges and let's give that 30% opacity and make that white. Then we duplicate, make it smaller, put that at 100%. Then we're gonna group it and create a component from it. Let's rename that, create a variant from it. On the variant, you're gonna make that white shape bigger and that is your loaded state. Name those properly so we know which one's which. You go onto prototype, click the little blue button stuff. Here we want to change it to after delay and there you go. And then you pop that into your design. Let's see how that looks. 
and that is it. If you have multiple prototypes in a one file, you can use this menu area to navigate between the different flows and you can rename them when you are in the design file. If you want to see your prototype in a device, on a prototype here, you've got device, and then you just choose your iPhone and there you go, you have your phone. I've linked this Figma file in the description below, but I've only included the four final screens. You'll have to use everything you learn in this video to create the final animation. I hope you find that useful and are ready to start making your own prototypes. Make sure you subscribe to see more videos like this. Let me know in the comment what stage you're in in your learning journey and what videos I should make that would be useful to you. Get into the habit of sharing your work. If you tag me on any platform, I will give you feedback and you'll be in for a chance of winning a one-to-one -one mentoring session with me. If you don't have any work to share, and you would like to enter, all you have to do is sign up to my mailing list and engage in any of my content on any social platforms. So like, share and comment. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.